evening. I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Well, the Maryland Attorney General's Office announces that the state has received nearly $24 million in opioid settlement money. This money comes from the lawsuit the state filed against Johnson & Johnson, McKesson, and Cardinal Health, and Amerisource Bergen. Prince George's County will get almost $1.4 million. It comes as opioid experts gathered at the Maryland Association of Counties Conference in Ocean City yesterday to discuss ways to combat the crisis. The settlement agreement, there are several factors of which you can use that money. It has to be used to address the devastation that the opioid epidemic has caused. Uh, but it's really a hopeful time in Maryland. We are getting not only just that settlement, but close to $500 million over the next 18 years. So we do have an opioid advisory council that meets quite often to discuss their priorities. And I think if we are thoughtful in how we put that money out and what it's used for, that we're really going to see a changing of the tide with this crisis. Um, it's a significant amount of money and you know they helped create this crisis, so it's good that they are having to pay to, to solve the problems that have been caused. The payments are the most recent installments of approximately $500 million that Maryland will receive over the next 18 years. Well, as the search continues for the missing Greenbelt school teacher, there is word that her son has been arrested on charges unrelated to her disappearance. Miriam Silla was last seen on July 29th on the 6500 block of Lake Park Drive. WJLA is reporting that her son Muhammad, who lives with her, was arrested in early August by state police on illicit traffic charges dating to June of 2018 and a failure to appear in court warrant. He's being held without bond. As for the school teacher, police say they have yet to find any clues related to her disappearance. A press conference and vigil held for Silla last week. Anyone who might have information about her whereabouts is asked to contact police. Well, the Riverdale man is convicted by a federal jury for health care fraud. 50-year-old Lambert Maboom worked as a program administrator for Holy Health, a company that provided mental health and rehab services. Prosecutors say Maboom paid individuals to come into the office and then use their personal information to bill Medicaid while no services were ever provided. During the trial, prosecutors also presented evidence which showed he made up fake Holy Health employees. He faced up to 25 years in prison. Well, a warning to recreational users of a local reservoir, the Recreational Water Contact Advisory has been issued to the T. Howard Duckett Reservoir after high concentrations of harmful algae blooms were detected. WSSC says drinking water is not affected, but water quality is being monitored as a precaution. Reservoir visitors are warned to avoid recreational water contact and not let pets drink or swim in the water. Meantime, a health advisory for the Tri-Adelphia Reservoir remains in effect. Well, clean energy is what Governor Wes Moore and the Maryland Energy Associ Administration say they're working toward. Former State Senator Paul Pinsky was appointed as director of the agency earlier in this year. Pinsky says clean energy wasn't a priority under the Hogan administration. Under Moore, he says the goal is 100 percent clean energy by 2035. Some progress has been made since Moore signed environmental legislation into law back in April, including objectives to increase offshore wind energy and the manufacturing of zero emission vehicles. We want to help our schools across the state where they're building new schools or, or replacing roofs uh, move towards clean energy. You know, we have uh, three schools across the state that are net zero emissions. They have geothermal, they have heat pumps, they have solar. I mean, they are actually creating as much energy as they're using, which is very cool. And we would like to expand that. We would like schools across the state to do the same thing. So Pinsky says he will also do his part to support the Department of the Environment when it comes to clean energy. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. Coming up, a local organization celebrates many years of service to the community. That story and more after the break. Stay tuned. Some days are just better than others. I think you should go talk to someone. It's not that easy. Have you been thinking about suicide? You can talk to me, Dad. It's been a tough couple of months. Welcome back. It's been 35 years since the organization Food and Friends opened shop in Westminster Presbyterian Church in South in West Southwest DC. Over the years, they've expanded, move and moved north to East DC 
and served up millions of medically jailed meals to people in need. Food and Friends delivers medically tailored meals to people who are living with serious diagnoses. For 35 years, Food and Friends has been guided by the principle of neighbors helping neighbors. It is not a food bank. It is not a soup kitchen. It is an organization that provides nearly 2 million meals a year to people in need across the DMV. Nine counties in Maryland, including Prince George's, Seven in Virginia. How many pieces of fish we go in each one? And DC. Most of our clients are, you know, more or less within the Beltway, and Prince George's County is 40% of the clients and meals. As we said, the meals are tailored to people with serious illnesses. Some may, for example, be on a high calorie diet, or perhaps the client is diabetic. They're referred to us by their doctor. They have a dietitian who partners with them throughout the time that they're with us. And that dietitian also creates a meal plan for them to address their health concerns. The meals are created in this kitchen, run by executive chef Rashid Abdurrahman. I, I love the fact that, you know, I've been working in kitchens for over 35 years, and the fact that I can take the skill set that I've learned and share it with the community. The kitchen is the heart of the organization for Food and Friends. And if the kitchen is the heart, I do delivery volunteering as well, and that's really, um, it really brings it home to me. because Then I the volunteers are the lifeblood of the organization. I actually get to meet some of the clients and develop a relationship with them. So, yeah, it's been really wonderful. Wonderful and ever more important. Food and Friends saw a 25% increase in need in Maryland in 2022, due in part to pandemic delayed diagnoses coupled with inflation. The demand for Food and Friends really went through the roof. And we're still seeing that now as, you know, a lot of folks were not going to the regular doctor's visits, not getting cancer screenings, things like that. You know, we were told to just do emergency appointments. To keep everything flowing, Food and Friends relies on financial donations. On Monday, August 21st, the organization is hosting its fundraiser. That's a really important event for us here at Food and Friends. You know, our services are free to our clients, and they always will be, and that means that we really have to rely a lot on our community to support this organization and make it possible to do this work. The event is called Chef's Best. And Chef's Best is a wonderful event where we gather chefs from the community, like really talented chefs, and we have the opportunity opportunity to like come together and like share a meal. They bring a lot of their talent and create like these great hors d'oeuvres. And the other thing that's really great about Chef's Best is a, a, a opportunity for food and friends to highlight what we do here. Again, that date is Monday, August 21st. In Northeast DC, Byron Scott, CTV News. And again, that fundraiser set for Monday, August 21st, beginning at 5.30 p.m. For more information and tickets, go to foodandfriends.org. Well, Prince George's police are inviting you to celebrate our area's own music genre, Go-Go. This Saturday, the department will host a Chuck Brown Day at National Harbor's Spear Park. There will be performances by PGPD Rhythm and Blues Band, as well as DJ Dirty Rico. We all know that Go-Go is the official music of Washington, D.C. However, um, Go-Go has a rich history here in Prince George's County. Um, it's embraced by the people, um, you know, I mean, even as an officer like myself, homegrown, I grew up in Prince George's County. I grew up on Go-Go. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's one of the things that we want to do to celebrate not only the legacy of Chuck Brown, but also to partner with the community um, and just enjoy community. And if you feel like busting loose, head out to Spear Park this Saturday at 11 a.m. The park is located at 115 Waterfront Street in Oxon Hill. Meantime, this Saturday, D.C. will host its ninth annual celebration honoring the godfather of Go-Go. The Chuck Brown Band headlines the tribute to the legendary singer and guitarist. There will also be performances by the Backyard Band, the District Kings, DJ Cool, and some special guests. Organizers say Go-Go is, is important to the DMV. is a genre. And it's ours. It belongs to us. It was cultivated here. Um, it has been a way for our um, families to participate in arts. It's been a way for our family members to earn money because um, many of us have family members who are go-go artists. And it does not exist anywhere else in the world. And what I mean does not exist, I'm saying 
a uh, large a subset of people who rock out to a genre and it's beautiful and it's ours. The festivities take place at Fort DuPont Park located on Minnesota Avenue Southeast from two until seven in the evening. Well, FBI headquarters or a data center, that's a new question for the site at the Old Landover Mall. The land owned by Lerner Corporation is earmarked as one of three sites on the short list for the new FBI headquarters. But county officials say the owner is looking to turn it into a data center if it is not selected for the new FBI location. Lerner recently took its first step into the development of the data center with a natural resources inventory. And still ahead, sports and more. Back in a moment. Stay tuned. Adding your own flavor to fashion comes with age. Okay, Dad, look at you. Yeah, welcome. Hi, Forgetting how to add doesn't. Finding it difficult to work with numbers may be a sign of Alzheimer's. That are you okay? An early diagnosis can help improve the quality of life for your loved one. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's. Some things come with age. Some others don't. The Prince George's Animal Management Facility of Marlboro is temporarily closed to the public due to the outbreak of a canine influenza. Humans cannot be infected, but it's highly contagious among dogs. To reduce the spread, all dogs in the facility are being quarantined for the next two weeks. Anyone who was approved for an adoption is asked to get their pet as soon as possible. All spay and neutering procedures are being waived at this time in an effort to reduce the number of animals at the facility. If you have any questions, you can call the number on your screen. In sports, one of the biggest mysteries surrounding the Washington Commanders season is how quarterback Sam Howell will perform. Howell was picked by the Commanders in the fifth round of the 2022 NFL Draft. He hasn't been on the field that much, only playing one regular season game in his rookie year and one preseason game against the Cleveland Browns last Friday. But in Washington's joint practices with the Baltimore Ravens, head coach Ron Rivera says he likes what he sees from Howell. Very pleased with the play of the quarterback. So I thought Sam did a great job. You know, this is one of the things that we talked about, how important that these two, game, these two days would be in our evaluation process. You know, and, and there's a lot of questions we wanted answered. And, you know, yesterday's tip I was really pleased with for not, you know, not just the quarterbacks, for him specifically as well. He did some really good things, threw some real good balls. Uh, his ball placement, his accuracy was what we needed. Decision making was very plus. Um, so, so again, I'm looking forward to watching the tape and, you know, with, 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 with uh, Eric and Tavita and really get a chance to evaluate him again um, after yesterday's practice. Switching to UMD football quarterback Tulia Tungavalayo was named to the watch list for the Manning Award, which honors the best quarterback in college football. This is the third season preseason watch list for Tungavaloa, who has a great career with the Terps quarterback. In his three years at Maryland, he has set records for passing yards, passing touchdowns, and completions. The winner of the Manning Award will be announced after the college football national championship game. And wrapping up sports, the Nationals took down the Boston Red Sox yesterday 6-2, and the Baltimore Orioles wrapped up their series versus the San Diego Padres yesterday 5-2. They will now shift their focus to their series against Oakland Athletics, which begins tomorrow at 940. And that's our news for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. I'm Byron Scott. Get a text asking for your Medicare or personal information. Strike. Shut it down.